I have a picture of where like you're looking dead at me. I said, I think Ralph was singing to me. And welcome to a podcast about nothing with V and A D. Today's guest is a very cool and very special man. Um, we are so excited and so happy to have him on the show. A uh, five-time American Award winner, a seven-time Grammy Award winner, the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award, recipient of a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They have a portrait in the National Portrait Gallery in D.C. and recently received the Kennedy Center Honors in 2019. The one the only, the original OG, Mr. Ralph Johnson of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Hello. Good oh, man. Wow. Listen to that. Yes. So you guys had tour dates set up. Yeah, we did. We um, did. We had that. We've pushed some dates back. We've pushed dates all the way back into 2021 at this point. I think that's the safest thing for for you guys, for you know your fans, because your your concerts aren't small. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. No, and then with this package with uh, Santana, it it would probably be a little bit bigger, you know. So we'll see what happens. You know, you, all you can do is wait it out, man. It's just one of those things you didn't see it coming but it's here. So now you have to deal with it, you know? And so. Yeah. Hey. And you guys also land. Did you ever think you'd see a day? Did you ever think you'd see a day when entertainment was shut down? No matter whatever else was going on, entertainment was never shut down. Shut down now though. Yeah. It's so. crazy. Uh, you do was saying yesterday, like the, the industry as we know it is going to definitely change like the ticket sales the you know the concerts the you know events all those things are definitely going to change yes um, you know moving forward and will they ever go back to what they have been absolutely <coughs> i think it's just gonna you know take some time it's, it really is going to take time oh yeah no this is going to be a new normal yeah <laughs> It's definitely. Definitely, gonna be a, definitely gonna be a new normal you know so we'll see what happens you know i don't you know i'll be very surprised if we get back to work before um august i agree oh. i agree <laughs> and, and you know i'm just talking about in terms of our dates and what we do mm. i don't see it i don't see it happening before august i think i'm gonna be sitting here during the summer you know I get to celebrate my birthday at home. I know. Yeah. What? Fourth of July, right? Well, that was good. <laughs> well, you remembered. We'll have to call you and have a drink over yeah, FaceTime. Oh, yes. Be, yes, we should. We right, should. we'll do that. We'll do but that. Tell us a little bit about the, I know you guys had landed the uh, residency in, at the Venetian Hotel in Vegas. And I'm, I, obviously that has also been put on hold. We um, started doing a residency uh, two years ago and it started at the Venetian. Uh, but then this year we were gonna do it at the Palms. Mm. But once again, and we were supposed to start opening night was supposed to be May 6th, uh, but that's not gonna happen. So, you know, we're pushing, we lost some of those dates, but some of those dates we're going to make up in Vegas. That's good. We couldn't get them all back. That's the thing. Yeah. I had the pleasure of going to one of your concerts um, here in Atlanta, and there were so many people in the audience, not just so many people in the audience, but of all ages. Like your right. music has, you know, obviously stood the test of time, but it's just great, timeless music from my parents to myself and my husband down to, you know, our kids, you, your, your music will just continue to live on. Um, our, our son says, uh, can we listen to Badia? And, and for the <laughs> longest time, we couldn't figure out what that was. What is, right. what is Badia? And so he would ask, and he would, had to be like one, two years old, and we have videos of him like 
dancing, Badia, Badia. And then one day we were watching YouTube, it came on. It was like, oh, September. <laughs> oh, that's funny. When uh, that tune was introduced to Philip by Maurice, he wasn't that crazy about it. Because really? he didn't get the body, because he didn't get the body out part. He thought that was the stupidest thing he'd ever heard. What? You know, yeah, really, seriously, he didn't. That's the part that's in your head the most. Right. You know, he <laughs> was like, what is body ah, you know. But we still do it in every show. By the way, if you hear September, if you walk in, you hear September, you're too late because we're at the end of the show. I'm just letting you know. Yes, you guys did play that. The words were <laughs> in. Great show, by the way. Let me just tell you. Oh, thank I, you. Not a huge concert fan. Um, I don't go to many concerts. I have been to a few. I like going to concerts of, you know, local artists, artists that we know uh, personally. Um, but I can honestly say definitely one of, if not my favorite concert, just not because of all the hits that you guys have. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's a hit. Right. That's a yeah. hit. Um, yeah. But just the show that you guys put on was amazing. The Thank energy you. throughout the whole show started with um, Sheila E. And of course, like, so, so energetic. And then you guys came out and just blew it out the water. Yeah, we felt that was that was a that night. I remember that night, probably because Sheila was opening. <laughs> and that's always a good package for us. If Sheila's opening, that's she really brings great energy. You know, she's a wonderful, wonderful entertainer entertainer. She has a great band, you know, and a killer percussion. So we always look forward to it if we can be on the stage with Sheila. Yeah. You know? I remember you coming back home from that concert, going off about it, showing me all the videos and the pictures. So, really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a yeah. I have a picture of where like you're looking dead at me, and I went back and told you. I said, I think Ralph was singing to me. <laughs> well, you have to, you know, you have to send me that picture. Where is I'll, that picture? I'll have to send it to you. I think you sent you a couple of pictures that I took. I haven't um, seen them. Okay, I'll resend them to you. But like, you're looking dead at me, and I I told everybody, <laughs> I did. told everybody, I was like, Ralph was singing to me. Look, look. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> so during this like time, like, has it been, has the downtime been hard for you? Like, what have you been doing during this time? Well. Actually, I have been uh, spending more time practicing, uh, just working on my hands, some drum set stuff. Been spending some time cooking. Matter of fact, I cooked last night. What did you cook? Stuffed bell peppers. Don't try. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> no, I cook. I cook stuffed bell peppers, and uh, but no, just you know what. This is a time to like uh, reflect and think about maybe some things that you've been wanting to do that you've been putting off because you kept saying, well, I don't have time, but now you have time, oh, you know, so some of those projects that you've been wanting to start, go ahead and get them started because you've got plenty of time, you know, so that's what I've been doing, just working on me, working on myself, you know, trying to make sure the uh, family is safe and we have everything we need to keep moving forward, you know, so, yeah. Um, From what I recall last time, Davina told me you had an extensive background when it came to playing instruments. So what exactly does a professional practice on when it comes to the drums? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> my, wife, my wife just gave me a note, spending time with me. Yeah, that's been part of it, too. <laughs> Uh, she was she she just retired so uh, oh congratulations yeah so, uh, because you know we have grandkids so it's time to time to hang out but anyway uh getting back to your question there's a ton for anyone that plays a musical instrument there's a ton of uh written material that you can work on there's always room to work on your technique you know so i have books full of these what they call Etudes, uh, spelled E-T-U-D-E, etude. 
And an etude is just a short musical composition specifically for one instrument that is designed to showcase your skill and technical ability. Mm. And so I have books of those and I step and just work on them, you know. Uh, then I, I may go downstairs and get on my Pro Tool system and work on a production, you know. Uh, but no, there's always, if you're, look, the study of a musical instrument is a lifetime study. So just because you know how to play it doesn't mean you're through studying. Mm. That's the truth. Okay. Do you have something you do really good that you learned it and now you put it away because you feel like you have it under your hands, but could you be better at it? What is it you do that you could be better at? That's a Everything. question. That's a hmm. question for both of you. And I would like an answer, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is a really good question. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, but if you put it like that, then I can improve on everything. Hey, I got a long way to go. Well, okay. So, I mean, may, I mean, for instance, let's take something as simple as typing. Maybe you're not the typist you want to be. You know, it's so crazy. Yesterday, I sat in front of the computer and looked up typing games because I'm like, okay, I feel slow. Every time I go to type something on the computer and I was over here playing typing games yesterday, that is definitely something I can improve on. Okay, see, that's one of those skills, you know? Yeah. And then maybe it's a sport. Maybe you want to work on your golf game or your tennis game. Personally, I'm a tennis player, you know, that we can't interact right now, but you know, yeah, you, this is the time when you take time, you stand in the mirror and you reflect and you say, am I the best that I can be? If not, mm -hmm. if that answer is no, then start picking out the things that will make you better and work on them. You know, maybe, hey, you know what? Maybe you aren't the best cook. I was just about to say, I think mine would be cooking. I really enjoy cooking and I do think I'm a great cook, um, but I could expand, you know, the different things that I cook. Yeah, because now a great cook is not necessarily a great baker. That is very true because I can't bake worth nothing. <laughs> okay, but. those brownies, good luck. You probably know, all right, so look, it. look, so, so if you want to be a good baker, look, start with this very simple task. Learn how to make a pie crust. Oh, I'm going to write that down. Look, and when you put look, that in the... See, I'm giving you, hey, you know what? I'm giving you all my good stuff today. I this hope you great. appreciate this. Yeah, we do. This is great. You know, my grandma used to make homemade apple pie, and she used to do oh, everything. Man, that's hard to beat from scratch and every Lord. Thanksgiving she would make homemade apple pie and you yeah you'll never be able to be the apple pie yeah I don't think so I don't and think then when so you get, and when you hey when you get through with that when you give me a cherry pie hmm. oh what I never <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe some peach cobbler. You know what? I, okay, I think see now. All right. Okay, right. See, okay. and then sweet potato pie. pie. Mm. So all okay. those things, you got to learn how to make. Okay, that's your assignment. That is my assignment. I think yeah, I might like vlog it. Good luck. <laughs> now, Good really, luck. I'm telling you, let's start with a simple pie crust. Yeah. That would be learn great. how to make a learn how to make a pie crust. We'll definitely and do you know, that. And you know what else? You know what else is easy to do? What pasta? Make your own pasta. Oh, I got. Oh wait, yeah, I got the pasta down. <laughs> no, 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 no. He said make your own. You mean like the actual noodles? Yeah, make your own. Oh, yeah, for sure. that's, that's different. different. <laughs> it's just flour. Look, it's just flour and egg and a little salt. There's oh. nothing. There's nothing magical or mystical about pasta, nothing. You make your own pasta? I can do it, have done it. Ooh. It's eggs and flour, I'm telling you. And then you just roll it out, flatten it out and go for it. I Whatever can you want. A mean pasta you want fettuccine, you want spaghetti, what do you want, what, what, what? Fettuccine is probably my favorite. Fettuccine, is it? I like penne noodles. Oh, yes, all right, I'm down with penne, yes, absolutely. As I take another sip of coffee, yes. 
<laughs> so AD was talking about the uh, single today, the single that I've been random raving over, smoothing. Oh, well, what did well, what did AD think about the single? Well, I clean to it all morning. My mom plays jazz for like fun. She always does. She says it puts her in the best mood. So when really? I was playing, it reminded me of her, and I was like, oh yeah, I definitely feel like I have a million dollars in my pocket. I need to be sitting somewhere drinking champagne. I don't know. It just makes me feel like that all the time. I cleaned up everything. It was a groove. I liked it. I enjoyed it. You like it? Play it on repeat. So, I, I, yeah, that's, that's a Thank big Thank you. That, that maybe it makes me feel good. I just got to get our guy over at the WCLK to go on it, and I'll be okay. I think I may, I may have him within the next couple of weeks. Okay. We'll be the program that. director, you know, so. Because he gave me great support on my last single. So, you know, I don't know how often he's getting into the station, but yeah. Um, well, D, how, how do you like it? Oh, well, you know, I love it. That the smoothing you. A, AD called me this one. She was like, wait, I feel like I need a cigar and some champagne. She said, I feel so <laughs> sophisticated right now. Wow. Wow. I, I love it. I, it puts me in the mood of like, um, I think I told you this before, the, the, um, it kind of has like that quiet storm, but also the funk of earth, wind, right. and fire. Right. And it's something that you could put on for a dinner party, but then you could also, you know, like AD said, it doesn't put you to sleep. So it's like, oh, we can clean yeah. to it. We can sit outside right. and have a conversation. Like it, it fits right. every every scenario every event so congratulations on that because that's a big deal and i cannot wait till you drop this ep again i have that you've already heard i have my favorite has ad now has ad heard, has ad heard the music technical difficulties on this side but i'm gonna get to it as soon as this is over i promise you so okay because i need to know what you think most definitely okay hey all right but yeah i um if we're allowed to know, uh, some of the um, features that you've had on the uh, album, on, on the, the EP. EP. Well, well, two vocalists that you would know right off, uh, Saida Garrett, mm -hmm. uh, who did the second tune on the EP, and then Howard Hewitt. Howard and I go back years. Matter of fact, Howard would tell you I discovered him at a club in Los Angeles. Uh, okay. So that would be the uh, fifth tune. Right so, before the, the, the end. The, right. right. The and then the third tune is another male vocalist I found, uh, Gene Van Buren, um, who wrote this thing that you hear called Wrapped. And uh, so, yeah. Then the rest of it is just instrumental music and uh, written by myself and uh, my longtime partner, uh, Raymond Crosley, who's a prolific writer, used to write for Motown. Oh, wow. Um, and then um, Marcel East, uh, who's the younger brother of bassist Nathan East, who plays with, uh, you know, foreplay. Uh, we did the first two tunes, you know. And actually, the first opening piece is produced by Maurice. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, because it appeared previously. This is a curate, curated uh, EP. And so I pulled pieces of music that I worked on with other people, you know, and then some new stuff also. But I wanted to just make a nice, you know, six tune presentation. So hopefully that's what I got, you know. You definitely do. The, um, the second tune, Embrace Your Light. I, yeah, I, love, yeah, right. I love the way that feels. Um, my first favorite would be um, um, the the second to last one, straight R and B. And oh, that's Howard. 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 That's yeah, and I didn't know it was him. Um, and I was like, "Who is this? Sounds so familiar." But then when he hit those falsettos, I was like, "Dang, he sounds like Ron Isley with yeah. those falsettos." And then he also reminded me a lot of Jay Holiday. Um, yeah. And I was like the perfect blend and then when you told me um when you said his name i was like oh that makes sense <laughs> Make good, right yeah that tune is called is this true love ah yeah, yeah. but thank you i'm glad you like it definitely you know. true r&b um, right on 
So taking it back just a little bit um, to your early days, um, I know that you were in a group, the master's class. No, the master's children. Children, sorry. The master's children. Yeah, that was that's that's at a club. I was playing at a club here in Los Angeles down on Crenshaw Boulevard called Mavericks Flat. And that's where I used to be every weekend playing with that group. We were crossed between Sly and the Family Stone and the Fifth Dimension. Uh, that's where Maurice and Verdine saw me play and asked me if I wanted to audition for the band. And that was December of 71. December of 71. So I did the audition and loved the way I played. And here we are, 50, year, 50 years later. You know. That's crazy. Yeah. 50 years later, you know, and doing a little bit of research, I was like, oh, wait, he was in two other bands uh, beforehand. Um, the Teen... Uh, the Teen Turbans. Turbans, yes. Yeah, actually won a local local radio station Battle of the Bands. Uh, and that was a pop station. We were the only black band in the contest. And uh, won it. I got a new drum set and they got new instruments. It was a whole thing, you know. How old were and you? I was about 16, I think. So you've been at this drumming thing for a long time. Yeah, no, I took my first drum lesson at eight years old. It was, a, it was an immediate love affair with the drums. And I started taking lessons and Kept studying, and I still study. Did I have an instructor? I still see today, working on really? just technique. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, yeah we usually get together. We haven't gotten together lately, but every two weeks we usually get together and work on some stuff. And I teach also. That's amazing. I think a lot of the younger musicians and you know singer songwriters stuff like that they would really appreciate that coming, especially coming from a legend like still studying your craft. And yeah, I also oh yeah. saw something where um, you guys practice before every show still. Right. Yeah. You still do sound check. You still. Do, oh, yeah. Every day that we, we usually do a sound check around four o'clock. We'll go for an hour or less. I mean, we just want to make sure everything is that's what, what we call a line check. And uh, then five o'clock we have catering. OK. And then usually the show will start seven thirty, eight o'clock. So the rest of that is just prep time, you know? Yeah. But that's the schedule every day when we're on the road. Every, every day. day. Still practicing. And then, depending, we may have checked out the hotel that afternoon at 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock mm -hmm. to head to the venue because we're not coming back to the hotel after the show. We're going to get on our buses and roll to the next gig. So while we're at the gig, the bus drivers are sleeping because they're gonna roll all night. So they come pick us up at midnight at the gig. We all get on our buses, get in our bunks, and they roll, and then about, depending on how far away the next gig is, about six or seven o'clock in the morning, we're pulling into the next gig, get up, check in, have breakfast, go to sleep, and that whole routine starts over again. And that's, that's the summer tour. And that's the routine all summer long. And how long? And you guys, 50 years. That's been the same routine for 50 yeah, years. Yeah. That's thinking about the longevity of the group. That's to have that in place. I can see the structure is what kept you guys together for this long. Yeah. Uh, we're very organized. Um, there's no craziness. Everybody gets along. Uh, we're very blessed to have the organization we have, you know. No, there's no drama, you know, we just, we've been doing it so long, we have it down. We really have it down, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, and you can you can tell throughout the whole thing, you know, through the performances, you know, talking to you, watching, you know, interviews, stuff like that. You guys are, you guys have it. You know that discipline. Yeah, but what is? Consistency. But what is? What is it? We have it, but what is it? What is that it? <laughs> it it is the something. The the tenacity to push through. I don't because I was I was gonna ask you, being that you've been in the group for so long, right? Is it something that you look for when it comes to seeing new artists? Is it something that you you know people want to see more so people like them? Like, hey, I want to see another group like 
persevere and go forward and be able to stick together? Is it something that you, you know, you've tried to give advice to or hand over, lend a hand to a certain group or groups who've been trying to break into the music industry who just couldn't get it together? Or is it just... Well, you know, it's, it, it, it could be a group or it could be an individual, you know, that's trying to break in, you know. Uh, but when I'm asked those kinds of questions, I say, first off, continue to work on your craft. Okay, work on it, work on it, work on it. Um, stay away from your detractors, people that would say, oh man, you'll never do that, you can't do that. Get away from those people. Surround yourself with people that are thinking like you think and want to do what you do mm -hmm. and are trying to do things in a positive way, you know? And um, look at videos and read books about people that have gone before you doing what you do to get inspired, you know, and to get some tips, yeah. you know, so that's what I say. Yeah, uh, watching, um, you know, some of the interviews, like I told you before, you guys speak a lot about, you know, the spiritual aspect of the group, very right. spiritual, very spiritual. And then watching your performances just throughout the years, like your, your album covers have been some of my favorite album covers. Um, it's you. one of those things between, you know, you guys and uh, the Funkadelics, P-Funk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I remember being a little girl and we've always had records and albums all over the house every weekend, you know, the house party thing and, you know, the music and all that stuff just filled my right. household. Um, and I remember just staring at, you know, the, the album covers and it's one of those things to where you see something today and then when you look at it again you'll see something else and I really appreciate you for sharing with me the actual album cover and how everything goes along I probably looked at it a million times because it's one of those things what, the one I the one I sent you for my EP yeah uh, yeah you know, looking at it it's like oh I didn't see that last time oh right that's amazing. Oh, wow. And then to see how it's kind of like a collection because it right. goes with the single and, and it like, you don't see artists or groups or anything doing that today, putting so much into the whole body of work. They think the project is just the music, but it's a project. It's the whole thing. It's a whole, you, you nailed it. It's a whole presentation. Yeah. And you yeah. have to be able to pull people in from the time they look at the cover. Yes. They have to say, man, look at that. Well, what does it sound like? If it looks like this, what does it sound like? And then what does it mean? Right. What does it mean? It's like, you know, people don't take the time anymore to right. really take in and study the music. And these artists, such as yourself and others, new and old, put so much into these bodies of work. And for someone just to listen and then, you know, on to the next is almost a disservice. And yeah. it, it was just so amazing to see how they went together, the body, the, the two mm. pieces, you know? And I was like, oh, I really do appreciate this. <laughs> right on. Well, thank you. Okay. Like, well, I, put a lot, I put a lot of thought into it. Yeah. Because this is my really my first solo project ever since I've been with Earth, Wind, and Fire. I did a group thing many, many years ago called Audio Caviar, but this is my first solo thing. So I wanted to be very, because I may not ever do another one, so this is going to be it, you know? <clears throat> yeah, Pardon it's, me. It's yeah. Beautiful. You, you no, know, thank you. The whole thank spirituality you. thing, you can feel it in the music, you can see it in the album covers. It's like, this whole transcending thing. It's like, oh, okay. This this is this is pretty cool. And well, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 The, just um, trying to do just trying to do what I can, make my little contribution, you know. You guys have been sampled so many times. Yeah. And I was just recently sampled by Drake. I did this piece called When to Say When. When to Say When. Yep. When to, when to Say When. And uh I was like, wow, really? It's the second time I've been sampled by a major artist. The first time was Jay-Z. On the wow. Blueprint. On the Blueprint, right. It was Song Cry. Yep. Yeah. So that's kind of cool, 
but yeah, mm -hmm. we have Earth, Earth, Wind has been sampled, and this, of course, the sample that Drake is using is not an Earth, Wind sample. It's a sample. It's the same sample that Jay Z used. So interesting, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, Earth, Wind has been sampled. Yes. Uh, I think it's like um, hold on, I actually wrote it six hundred and fifty-one times. Oh yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. I know. Get out. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is like your samples are it they're in music that you know from my generation that definitely has such an impact on the culture you know right. i'm not a player i just crush a lot but like that was an earth wind and fire <laughs> sample you know obviously i mean you just told us you you think it's really cool that you know people sample your music well yeah because it exposes you to to a whole nother segment of the listening public you know i call it grassroots marketing mm. and um you'll hear this sample and somebody's inevitably going to go well who is that where did that sample come from and that's when they go oh it's just earth wind and fire earth wind and fire i'm not hip well now you are yeah. <laughs> and now you go back and start to listen to what we've done previously and you go oh man what you know and hopefully you you've pulled in a new fan, you know? Yeah. So the yeah. sampling things, we're, we're all about, yeah, sample us. Keep us, keep us relevant, you know? See, that's a different outlook from what I've usually hear sampling coming from. You know, people are always like, well, I don't want my music to be played and sounding like this or sounding like this. So that's a very open mindset to have. I like that. I like it. Well, yeah, no, because it, at the same time, look, from the standpoint of economics, it also creates a brand new revenue stream. And part of why you're in the business from a just a business standpoint as a writer and a publisher is to make some money. If your songs aren't working for you, then you have living room hits. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> oh man, living room hit. That's a uh, living room hit. Living room hit is when you write a song, you tell your friend to come over and you go, man, listen to this, listen to this. And that's as yeah, far as it goes. Yeah, yeah. And that's as far as it goes. It's a living room hit, you know. So you don't want living room hits. You want your stuff to be out there, being heard. I'll live forever. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, that's that's the idea. How many How many members were in Earth, Wind, and Fire at one time? Nine. Nine. Ooh, that's a nine. <laughs> nine. I've heard people refer to it as the classic nine, but yeah, nine. Oh, I like that. Nine. Yeah. That's a lot of members. Yeah, it is. It's a lot to control. Mm. Yeah. Maurice, Maurice had his hands full because we were just cats in our 20s. So we were just wild, just crazy, ready to go. Because Maurice was 10 years older than us. I was just you know? about to ask that. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was 10 years older than us. So there you go. Had you guys hands full. It was just one, you know what? It was a traveling musical college. Mm. we had nothing to do with that music that's all we had to do what else what else do we have to do just do that music you know, tell us so. a story about a story that sticks out in your head about <laughs> the group uh, uh, a story that you know oh, at that time you were like hmm and then now every well, now and then you still well one of the greatest one of the greatest stories of all time is the first time we went to DC and we were opening for the Funkadelics and see, we had never been on stage with the Funkadelics. So we go out and we do our little set, you know, Love, Peace and Granola from LA. And uh, we come off and then the Funkadelics band goes up and hits the stage and man, oh it started with this groove and this groove was like, and all the heads in the audience started bobbing and there was more smoke in the air and, and they came out and they, man, they killed us. And uh, so Maurice said, okay. He said, that won't happen again. And we went back and rehearsed. Boy, the next time we saw the Funkin' Delks, it was a brand new ball game. And so it evolved, our, our thing evolved into the production you see today, mm. you know, because we had the benefit of um, Maurice pulled in uh, George Faison, who was hot off of Broadway 
having choreographed The Wiz. Mm -hmm. So he had George fly in and work with us uh, and teach us movement, teach us body movement, you know, and it put us in a whole nother thing. So today it's just, we didn't even think when we hit the stage, we're just doing stuff, you know. Yeah, Without those moves, thinking. smooth. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, mm. so, yeah. So that's one of the greatest stories of all time for Earth Wind, trust me. P-Funk P showed y'all up and then y'all went and yeah, practiced. We, <laughs> yeah, we did. We went back to LA and we started rehearsing really seriously. We were like, okay, okay, that's fine. We'll see about this. Tell us a little bit about the martial arts. Oh, well, that's something I started in 1980. Uh, I started studying uh, Tong Soo Do, which is a Korean style of karate. And uh, that was my first black belt. That was April 7th, 1984. <clears throat> then around 98, I started studying a style of Kung Fu known as San Su. And I'm a third degree black belt in that. So yeah, the, the martial arts is just one of those things I was attracted to. And it was one of those things I wanted to accomplish, you know, and uh, I love it. You know, I also teach self-defense, you know. Um, so important. Yeah, I, I think so, you know. Uh, I'm also a certified scuba diver, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'll strap a tank on and jump off the boat and go down and see what's up. <coughs> Excuse me. Better than me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got I got certified in nineteen seventy six. For scuba diving. What is that test like? What is the certification for that? Well, it's a three week course, at least it was when I took it. It's given by there are two agencies that you can get certified through. <clears throat> um one is called PADI, which is the Professional Association of Diving Instructors. Uh, and then there's NAWI, uh, National Association of Underwater Instructors. Uh, I'm a NAWI diver. Uh, I have an advanced certification. And uh, it's a three-week course, you know, and you just learn basic skills, you know, and uh, then you do a checkout ride. They take you out to Catalina Island. <clears throat> they strap a tank on your back, you jump out and do what they call a checkout dive. You, know? you still dive today? Like I haven't been I haven't been diving in some time, but <clears throat> it would be a very easy thing to do. I mean I haven't forgotten what I'm supposed to do. It's just once once you know it, you know it. You know. <laughs> it's kinda like riding a bicycle. Once you know it, you know it. Once you know it, you know it. Yeah. It's too many unknowns down there. Like, I can't see if it's too well, no, dark, no, I'm not going to. It depends on where you're diving. If you're yeah. diving in Hawaii or Mexico, your visibility could be 80 to 100 feet. That's really? clear water. Now, if you're diving off the coast here, yeah, you know, <laughs> uh, what they call the Santa Monica Bay, no, you won't have that kind of visibility. You'd have to go further out to Catalina or San Clemente or Anacapa, uh, and you'd get better diving conditions, you know. I'd rather be in the air. Well, I do that too. You know what? We're done I'm with this. Student, I'm, a, just... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a student pilot. I'm also a student pilot. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. I'm a student pilot. Yeah. That's I love serious. aviation. I love especially military, military av aviation, jet aircraft and what have you. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm just one of those guys that just likes to do a lot of different stuff and learn a lot of different things, you know. That's so. amazing. That is amazing. But see, that's what I, but see, that's what I was saying earlier. Look, okay, so now's the time. Okay, if there's something you've really been wanting to do and you've been putting it off, start doing it. Just do it. Yeah. I'm going to show you something right quick. These okay. are the, these are books and music that I'm working in. Okay, that I do, I do this on a daily. Can you see all that? Yeah. Yeah. That's like on a daily basis. You're writing it? You're writing the well, music? No, it's, here, look. My sticks and my pad. Ah. 
And I sit here on this counter and I just work on my hands, you know? Has your wife ever yell at, yelled at you and said, shut up the noise? No, no. You know what? No, nope, <laughs> not at all. That's amazing. No, not at all. I mean, you can't. See, I didn't even get that when I was, when I was a kid coming up. That's good. My parents, never, my parents never said, okay, all right, that's enough. Please get up. No, they never did that. They were always, I could practice as long as I wanted, anytime I want. Oh, that's great. And see, that paid off for them in the long run. <laughs> yeah, actually it did. Quite honestly, it did. You know, because you know what? <clears throat> I always felt that I should share my success. So, you know, when I started making money, man, I was, you know, I was recarpeting the house where they lived. And if she needed a new refrigerator or stove, bang, done. Bought them a brand new car. You know, back in 76, it was a 76 Lincoln Continental uh, Mark IV, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I would do. But all of my family benefited and still does uh, from my success. That's you know? beautiful. Because that's the way it's got to be. You know, I mean, hey, you got to share it. You got to share it. Yeah. Not e it's not even a thought, you know? Because, yeah, what's the point? You got to share it. Mm -hmm. If you can help and see, that's part of being an ascended being. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to, you have, you have to, you have to pay it forward. But before you can pay it forward, you have to be a good listener. And you have to be sensitive to the needs of others. Mm. OK, and you got to listen. People are talking to you. They're saying things. And they're in need. And they may not come out and say, hey, man, I can really. But if you listen, it's in there when they're talking to you. So you reach in your pocket and you give them what, they're need, what they need and you keep stepping, you know. If you're going to give them advice, make sure it's solid device. I mean, advice, not mm -hmm. device. Advice, solid advice. You know, um, don't just talk to hear yourself talk. You know. Amen. So, if you're going to what they call exhort, what is that? E X H O R T to advise or counsel. Um, make sure it's 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 solid stuff. Are those your Grammys behind you? How did you know? <laughs> I can see them. Here, let me get out the way and you can see if you can see the mantle. Oh. Dang. <laughs> they <didn't> want to. <laughs> wow. Yeah, those are uh, all seven, all seven of the Grammys. Um, the one in the center, the darker one is the Lifetime Achievement Award from uh, Neris. Um, and oh, by the way, in the opening, you said, um, uh, what did you call it? American, American, America, it's the American Music Award. I think you said American Award. You go back and check that though. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, just a small, just a small correction there. Thank you. The American yes. Music Award. That is very yes. true. And yes. a difference. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. So, so really, that's... Um, did you have any more questions? This has been yeah. a very lengthy, lengthy conversation. Yeah, it has. Well, appreciate we enjoyed every minute of it, though. Well, right on. I've enjoyed it, too. You know? And... and last uh, nervous to this week being like hey get on the phone cousin ralph hey now right <laughs> uh, cousin uncle ralph <laughs> right on well, I've, been, I've been called that before make so d make sure ad gets the uh music i will i definitely will i wanted to check it out you know i will do i will take a listen and i will definitely let you know but from what i've heard mm -hmm. I'm sure I won't have any complaints. Right. I want to see. I want to see what you think. We'll do. Definitely. Do you have any questions for us or anything else you want to end off with? 
Ah, we lost them. And thank you for being a part of the quarantine interview. <laughs> right. This that was, was dope. We're going to tell our Uncle Ralph, thank you. Call yeah. Him. Thank you so much. You're going to go make the pie. You know I am. <laughs> I feel like we're just gonna have a whole bunch of pie crust laying around. Like, uh, you gonna put something in the pie? <laughs> <laughs> nope. This is what Ralph. This is what Uncle Ralph told me to do. Okay. The, the pie crust. Pie, pie crust. Oh, pie I crust know? and noodles. I'm gonna have pie crust and noodles everywhere. <laughs> pie crust and noodles. Pie crust and noodles. Anybody want some noodles? <laughs> Nothing to go with it. <laughs> Yeah, that was dope. It was. Thanks, Uncle Ralph. It's been real. All right, I just text them. Um, Just tell him thank you. All right, cool. Well, thank you guys for tuning in to a podcast about nothing with V. And AD, stay inside, wash your hands, and don't touch your face. Thanks, Cooper. Oh, and brush your teeth just because you're quarantined does not give you the right to be dirty yes that's oh man i take a shower two times a day now because i realize that when you sit in the house it's it's actually worse than being outside yep two times a day in the morning and the night like it's no crazy. in the nighttime i'm not i can't sweat and sleep it seems like it's hotter in the house these days i don't know what's happening but when you open the windows you're freezing no, I couldn't breathe yesterday. I, like I was in here panicking, looking up symptoms and stuff. It's the allergy. So, oh, so now they said if you can't smell anything, you may have the corona. Smell or taste. But my thing is, okay, so that makes sense, huh? Smell and taste are connected. So if you can't, usually if you can't smell something, you can't taste it either. Yeah, true. But my my question is, can you have one symptom and not the others? Like, or do you have yeah. to have two to, for it to be a thing it's one symptom but i it from what's happening and what it seems like is really going on if you have one symptom that progresses over more than like two or three days and you feel well i guess it, that it is probably more than one but it's usually it seems like people are going for one one or two Cause I was stressed out yesterday. So I was sitting back here. I mean, I was sitting in my office <laughs> <laughs> working and then all of a sudden my, like I had shortness of breath and then I started sweating and I was like, <sighs> people are driving themselves crazy. They are. It's so nerve wracking. Then I hit my inhaler that didn't work. So then I started looking up symptoms, took my temperature like 10 times. But my temperature has been fluctuating between like 99 and at the highest it got was like 100 over the past few weeks. What is a fever for adults? Because 100 only sounds scary in babies. Yeah, I, so I think over 100 is a thing. Like I don't think it's it, like 99 is not a fever. It's just, you know, it's just. You need to take a cold yeah. shot. Yeah, like. And then it says, like, you shouldn't take a temperature in the morning. Take it in the afternoon. Um, okay. You know, the low grade, uh, like, 99 something is not a fever. So I felt better about that. But it's like, there's so many unknowns with this thing that it's just uncomfortable, you know, to have anything. I, I have shortness of breath every time this year. You know, I get a new inhaler every time just yeah. because of allergies. Um, but... I've never thought to take my temperature, you know, around this time. So I could have been, you know, 99.8 every year. I don't remember the last time I've taken my temperature. They're th- like all the thermometers are sold out as if when people can't tell if they're hot or not. Like, so I well, I, I think it's more so for you can tell if you're hot, but like if you have kids and stuff like that, that's when it's important to have it. Are you Isn't it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you say what? You can do with like a penny or something like that, or is that fake? Stop making up stuff. A penny. 
Putting a penny in your mouth to reduce your fever? I thought what it was like if you're about to get pulled over by the police and you think you're about to get a breathalyzer, put a penny in your mouth. So you have <laughs> proper problems? What? I thought it did something to like the breathalyzer, <laughs> but I've never had that problem. Mints. <laughs> but a mint, a mint doesn't like. If oh, you, it, you saying it throws off the breathalyzer? Oh, y'all, don't listen to her. Don't get caught up trying to blame it on me. I ain't going to court for none of y'all. I'm just saying, if y'all ever like, if you if you gonna get drunk, if you are gonna be drunk anyway, and don't drive, okay? Don't be dumb. Huh? <laughs> Gargling pennies, don't <laughs> <laughs> so, eh, eh. like just throw a penny, just one penny, people. Three, at, three at the most, and let us know how that turns out. Like, I can see that right now. How much of a disaster? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me tell you another story real quick. So you know, uh, Sierra and Sherelle from Head Wraps and Lipstick mm-hmm. podcast. So they went live yesterday, right? And they put it out there going live Thursday at 6 30. So on Wednesday, you know, you're quarantined. You don't you can't you don't think about the the <laughs> the days are off. Dog, I got all dressed up. <laughs> Cause I was like, okay, I'm a request to be on, you know, I'm a press request. <laughs> Dog, let me tell you, I had my wig on, I had my lipstick on. I'll share, I'll share a picture because you know, I was like, oh, okay, like, ooh, I'm gonna be on the show. And I'm sitting there with my phone like this. Oh, it's seven, it's seven forty-five. Wait, it's yeah, I mean it's six forty-five. Okay, it's six fifty. So I DM'd them and I was like, Y'all, I'm I'm ready. <laughs> Why they just send back laughing talking about it's tomorrow i was like damn i was i'm early that's what you get yo I, when that's i say cal- all them calendars you got and you ain't know what that was <laughs> i did have a lot of calendars <laughs> no seriously i have lost track of the day so like thank god for iphone because you're like oh it's friday <laughs> oh saturday i tried to tell the boys it was tuesday today so we because i you know i mean i love movie night but it seems like it's coming faster every week now. Like it's, it's too soon. <laughs> we just saw Trolls. Like, what are we going to watch? Okay? We done seen all the goddamn movies. We done ate all the goddamn snacks. What are we going to do? Talking about, Mommy, what's today? Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> what? We talking about, uh-uh. It's Friday. You know what is. They don't know no other day of the well. Thomas does, but Cooper be like, you be like, what's this day? Friday, bro. It's Monday. What's this day? Friday? No, nope. Tuesday. What's this day? Friday. Friday. Duh, just go in order. That is funny. Quarantine we, lifestyle. We literally just watched trolls and <laughs> just ate popcorn. Oh. I can't choke on another popcorn kernel skin y'all do y'all do it get some different kind of popcorn without the kernel. i know i just burn it get some pirates pirates but oh i love pirates booty ain't nobody going out to these stores <laughs> this podcast is one hour ten minutes uh-uh, i don't have the time <laughs> <laughs> Like, no, this is too late. But the time is already passed. (laughs) What do you mean? It's not like I said, yo, we're going to talk for an hour (laughs) and 30 minutes. And you said it before. Like, the time is passed. You're like, uh uh, I I don't have that type of time. Like, what? (laughs) What Where where do you have to go? (laughs) I got stuff to do today. It's like, I'm still slaving, essentially working. That is true. Keep what? Because they ain't subscribing to the YouTube. Yo, y'all. Yo. So I don't have to be out here essentially working. Subscribe, please, y'all. Please. (laughs) Yo, this is the best commercial ever. 
<laughs> risking my life. Like, because y'all don't want to subscribe. Okay? Y'all don't subscribe. It. Subscribe to the page. Tell your kids. Yeah, oh, he's stressing AD out. Subscribe. We all about to be essential workers, though. I'm about to apply, okay? Essentially work with me. I've been getting all the perks, too. Oh, yeah, you at, at the grocery store. Essential workers get this. Okay, I'll be over there. Free coffee in the morning. Essentially, I'm working. <laughs> they need to give y'all free groceries. That's what they need to do. People are already taking their free groceries. Oh, no. snap. <laughs> snap. Snap. I'm recording. Don't incriminate anyone. I'm not. I'm not taking anything. I'm saying that's why the grocery store is empty. They closed down one of the grocery stores over here because people were stealing. They closed down a grocery store? Mm-hmm. Damn. Because people were stealing? hmm So what are they going to do with the food that's in a grocery store? They're going to have to keep it open, but they probably, I mean, like, keep everything running, but they'll have to dispose of it. Throw it away. That's dumb. <laughs> you might as well let the people steal it. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life. It's so- the- is a both a loss and I'm, these companies would much rather throw their stuff away than give it out for free that's so dumb so so you telling me you were, yeah that you would rather the food rot than people who aren't working right now and going through this hard time steal the food like i get it so to keep them from stealing just give it to them have a certain amount a certain a certain time it's weird though, because there's actually a lot of places that are giving out free food. So people really just need to do their research and go to somebody's church. Yeah, that's true. There's a bunch of people giving out free food right now. Like that's true. They're doing what? a lot of it in Cobb County too, like the yeah, schools and to um neighborhoods passing out lunches. Like you can find food right now if you really are going through it. There's no need to like go to jail for fun. These cops are not arresting anybody. I'm about, I'm, I mean, I'm like. These cops are, I don't know what they're up to. I saw a police chase the other day. Why? Because there's space and opportunity on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Let's yeah. go and check somebody. There was three dudes in the car. I saw them. They made a right turn onto the highway and they just started speeding. Of course, I'm thinking the police coming up behind me. I'm like, oh no, let me get over. Get over to the right, he flies by, and they go trailing down the highway. Because there's nothing but space. He can swerve to the left, swerve to the right. It says space and opportunity. Don't try this at home. That's been real. It has. Go ahead. Y'all need to subscribe. Like all our pages. Comment. Tell your cousins, your mommy friends, so we don't have to be out here essentially working, especially AD. Please. Yes. I'll buy y'all lunch. <laughs> Send your cash apps below. They're going to get deleted. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up. Okay. All right. Stay safe, quarantine style. See you guys next week. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You be safe out there. Will do. Let I us mean- know if you need anything. I I'll try to send this EP to you again, too. Okay. Or you might have to log on to the, what's the name? And just go okay. grab it. Yeah. Cool beans. Thank you, Uncle Ralph. Thanks, See you Uncle later. Ralph. Stay safe. Stay clean. Peace out. Bye. Bye. Can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I thought it was stopping. The- I thought it was stopping. The- I didn't know it wasn't hanging up. Okay. Oh, leave me. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye.